Okay, here's an overview of just 10 plants that we talked about in the uh, Great Plains grasslands and the southwestern desert shrublands and grasslands. Just a quick overview for rangeland principles at the University of Idaho. Now let's go into some plants that we've talked about already, but the ones that you'll need to know in, in this class. Four grasses. Let's start with big blue stem. Let's start with big blue stem. It was one of those signature tall grasses of the tall grass prairie. Um, the main feature of trying to recognize it is these uh, two to three branches. They, they form these finger-like branches. Uh, one of the common names of this plant is called is turkey foot because those three branches um, form an inflorescence that looks kind of like turkey foot. It's, it's sort of a red and scruffy um, inflorescence. The plant is quite tall and it has scaly rhizomes. So when you see it out in nature, it forms a, a big a sod. And, uh, and that was important in the, in the prairie. Here's a couple pictures of it. Again, it, it is quite tall, one and a half to eight feet tall, easily over your head, turning red um, upon maturity. And it is a warm season grass, so it does mature quite late in the season. In fact, even around uh, in Idaho, one of the um, plants that we have as an ornamental grass is either um, tall blue, tall, um, I'm sorry, big blue stem or Indian grass because they turn red in the fall. Now go back to the other side of the plains, the west side of the plains in the short grass prairie and you would find blue grama. This is one of the signature grasses of the short grass prairie. Most distinctive feature about it is this seed head that is just one finger or eyebrow like inflorescence. So it's kind of a comb of an inflorescence and each plant just has one or two or maybe three on there. It does form a sod, but it forms it not with rhizomes or stolons, but just by kind of each tiller coming up right beside each other. So it forms just kind of a sod on the ground of basal leaves. So very a lot of thick basal leaves and then a few inflorescences sticking up. Here are a picture of those inflorescence. The one on the left is actually in flower. So that's a, a, a blue grama grass that is completely in flower with the anthers sticking out of the seed head. On the right hand side is how we might would normally see it as a base of a base of leaves and then two or three uh, inflorescences sticking way up with eyebrows on them. It's fairly short, six inches, could be up to 20, but that would be unusual. Buffalo grass is the other signature grass of the short grass prairie. Uh, this one also forms a sod, um, but it forms it with uh, rhizomes. I'm sorry, with uh, stolons. This plant is also unique because it has male and female flowers. So it has one plant that has male flowers and a different plant that has female flowers. That's called dioecious. When you have uh, the the male and female flowers on different plants, the male flowers uh, look a bit like blue grama. They're kind of an eyebrow-like seed head. The female flowers are right at the base, kind of down in the leaves. They're kind of a nut-like uh, structure. Uh, it does form a nice sod because of those stolons, and in uh, throughout much of the plains, it's used as an ornamental grass uh, for lawns, for um, lawn grasses, because it has low leaves, hardly ever needs to be mowed and it stays green as long as there's moisture uh, and so it's really low it doesn't need to be water doesn't need to be mowed it's, it's a great little lawn grass here's some pictures of that uh, the female flowers again you see on the left they, they're st stuck kind of down in the leaves also the leaves can be quite hairy a low uh, growing two to eight inches uh, tall and then the male flowers can be quite pretty when the anthers stick out they're orange anthers but you also mostly recognize them just as kind of these three fingers of, of uh, combs of seeds on the seed head. So another um, important plant in the short grass prairie. Tobosa grass is uh, in those, it, it, what a grass we find in the Southwest is pretty nondescript, just kind of a gray color, but its flowers are kind of uh, unique because they're, they're fan-like. So when you get to, um, zoom into that flower you'll see that each one of those florets is fan-like. It's prosomatous so it forms a large sods again just kind of a gray sage color. Here's some pictures of it like I say no, I don't think it's very descript it just forms these kind of moths of, of sod grass in the in this um, southwestern desert. Okay let's move on to a few forbs and woody plants. Let's start with the desert marigold, staying down in the southwest, and uh, this is a really pretty plant. It has very hairy leaves, mostly basal leaves that have kind of lobed, they're sort of lobe dissected. 
It is a member of the Helianthia, which is the sunflower tribe, and, and it's a flower is a composite with uh, ray flowers, like the rays of the sun, so those yellow ray flowers, and then the center of the plant are uh, also yellow disc flowers. Because it's got those beautiful yellow flowers, it's used a lot in ornamental uh, landscaping in the southwest. Here you can see some pictures of why it's used in ornamental um, settings because it's really got a beautiful yellow flower and the, the leaves are those kind of lobed hairy gray flowers or gray uh, leaves. So quite pretty. So that's desert marigold. Creosote bush I mentioned a few times as being that something in the understory of uh, most of the deserts, especially uh, the Mojave, uh, would have creosote bush in it. It's relatively easy to recognize. Um, because its leaf ha it has two leaflets that um, that are connected at the base, and so they form kind of horns. Uh, and each leaf is really has those two leaflets. Um, the the stem is kind of like rope. It looks like it's got sort of knots in it. Every time it had a new stem or new leaves, it, it forms kind of a knot there. The seeds are fuzzy, and that's also a unique characteristic, as we'll see in this next photo that on the right hand side you see the, the flowers are quite pretty, they're yellow, and then the seeds are this, this hairy uh, fuzzy yellow, or fuzzy white seed. Picture of the leaves there up on the right, those horn-like leaves, two leaflets held together at the base, and then just how you would see it out on the landscape, uh, growing up kind of tall, a gray, a gray um, bark, a smooth bark, and it, it grows, yeah, it can grow up, um, shoulder height or higher, not really a tree, just kind of a, a gangly shrub. Last one, mesquite, honey mesquite. Uh, of course, if you have ever been to Texas or this desert southwest, you've seen mesquite. It's all across the plains. Sometimes it forms large trees uh, that you get, uh, you know, get under, and even uh, there's quite a lot of people that use it to make um, furniture and stuff because it's it's very hard. So in one form, it can form a large tree. As you move further west and it gets drier and drier, it's more of a shrub. So in sandy soils or dry conditions, it's a shrub. In more rich soils or, or wetter conditions, it might form a tree. Although the leaflet looks like just a bunch of little leaves, it's actually a compound leaf that um, it just has two pinnae on it. So it's compound, it's sort of two branches, and on each of those branches are some small leaflets. A distinctive feature of the plant is the, a pretty pretty bad thorn. Each, the, the trees can be quite thorny and um, pretty uh, pretty rigid thorns. Uh, in this picture, you can see just those kind of uh, hanging down uh, leaves, and also the fruits, which are um, uh, pea-like, pea and they the Fruits can be ground into kind of a, a mash or kind of a flower. And it, its flowers are, when they're blooming, they, they really sweet smelling. And so therefore that's where it gets that name honey mesquite because it does make really nice honey. So it's widespread throughout the desert, it does form a tree or a shrub. And it, it does have good flowers and pods, but the leaves are pretty much inedible. That's it, just 10 plants that are real signature plants of the Great Plains grasslands and the southwestern desert shrublands and grasslands.